Hello and welcome to another episode of Connecting Life. I'm just waiting for one Glenn McCrory to join the chat and we will get tonight's episode started. Hope everyone is well. First episode of the week. Let's see. We get Glenn connected. There are the little notification now and you'll be able to to join. Hello. There we are. Wow. You know what? It's so you? hard. I never, I never done this on Instagram. I knew, I knew you were probably panicking a little bit. <laughs> just, oh, that was so. Uh, You're here now. You managed it. We're all good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. So how, how are things? It's like my t-shirt. <laughs> You've done this before. <laughs> You're a professional. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, Lydia. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, really, really good. Exciting well, times for you at the moment. It's what, sorry? Exciting times for you at the moment. Well, I don't know. I mean, things, things, things are good. Um, hope, hopefully, it's going to get exciting if we if we get some a signature. But um, you know, it's good. You know what's really good, Lydia, is is the whole lockdown thing for me has been been terrible um, over here. I've been really suffering. Um, no work or anything like that. So um, to have to all of a sudden have. To go from from where I was to be thinking about fighting and getting up in the morning and going running and training in the gym is just ah, oh, it's so good. It just feels so good. I'm in the gym with my son, and um, ah, it's, it's brilliant. It's really, it's really, it's really good. How old is your son? My son's thirty. Joseph. Oh, okay. Jo so Joseph, Joe. So yeah, you guys have been training Joseph together. He's about three months old. Sorry. <laughs> you guys have been training together. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's great because it's uh, you know, my boy missed out on my career because <laughs> I retired twenty-seven years ago or something. When yeah. I was just a, you know, I was just in my twenties myself. Um, so he's never, you know, obviously he's seen his dad on on tape and all that sort of stuff. Um, but for him to be there with me, and he he missed out on a boxing career himself because he had like so many of my family bad eyes. Um, I had terrible eyes, but back in the days, you could you could cheat the old eye chart. Well, there's no <laughs> cheating, there's no, there's no cheating in, in modern days. So, um, so his eyes weren't good enough to box. Wow, I didn't know that at all. I've had operations on my eyes and everything. Um, yeah, I was I, through my whole career <laughs> half blind. No yeah, way. Lens, so I, I was going to ask. Laser surgery, lens surgery, um, thanks to Optical Express who. Fixed me. Um, yeah, no, I had real, real, real problems. But um, so when but you managed, were fighting, managed then, to when, learn, managed to learn the eye chart. When you were fighting, like with your corner, would they have to look for certain things, you know, in you, or would they just know that okay, this is just the way it is? Like I imagine your eyesight is your eyesight anyway in a fight. You know what I mean? Like especially if we see see fighters get cuts or in the eye or anything. You know, obviously Daniel Dubois was a, a perfect example. You know, he's the most recent with with such a bad eye injury. So did, did it did it come into play at all for you? Um, it did. It did. It's you know, it's certain certain venues when when. You know, certain venues aren't lit as well as as others. You know, when you're starting off as a as a youngster, um, you know, you you have to wait till you get mid ring before I could see the guy. <laughs> no, it was it was really. I mean, I eventually got got treatment because you know I never wore glasses in case that would give me away, but I eventually got got treatment because I was really I was I was going to to gigs, work and and driving back. And you know, I, I, it would take me about nine hours to get home because I'd be going. I, and I realized, you know, <laughs> it was, I would be going so slow because I was so, I was, I was so worried about about um, my eyesight and um, about not being able to see. It was terrible. And it, 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 you know, the realization of having to get something done, I've had to finally admit to it was um, was just you know driving, having kids in the car and that and thinking. Yeah, of course. Oh, this, yeah. This is you know, I've got to get something done here. This is you, you know. It's serious when you when you're worried about driving. I imagine. So let's talk about this this uh, incredible career that you've had because obviously back in the news, back in the sports, boxing media as as of late, obviously the the potential clash with uh, Evander Holyfield, big news, and mm. obviously off the back of of Tyson and uh, Roy Jones Jr. Mm. their comeback, it kind of seems like this is the year or the age of the the legends comeback. I suppose. Do you know what? 
it, it, it didn't really dawn on me. Um, obviously, it was exciting to see Tyson because I've got history with Tyson. You know, when we were young and he was in his heyday, yeah. I was a, a spawn partner. And I knew how great he was. And, you know, I was also around him in his decline, you know, when, when his life sort of took a, a bad turn and, you know, the way he lived. And, um, and so to see him, you know, decline and, and then to, to resurrect himself at 54 was quite, was quite amazing. And I knew, I knew Mike would not try, would not go in and do anything to embarrass himself. You know, would take it very, very seriously. So I wanted to see what he could do. Um, and I, I rang Evander Holyfield, who, you know, we've had off. I wanted to, to find out what he thought about it. Strictly, you know, I had no thoughts about getting back in the ring ever again. And then he said, Glenn, you know, we should do it. Call me out. Let's get it on. <laughs> so that's how, that's how it came about. Um, and since then, I we haven't spoke to him since then, but he's texted me every single day. Every single day he's texted me with messages from the Bible prayers you know he's a very religious man he's messaged me with prayers but never nothing about a fight so so i don't i don't know and then people have you know the certain um, promoters I'm, I'm i'm working with tough um promotions um simon little and, and simon whittle and they they are they are very keen to try and get this get the fight on but at the minute his people are just talking ridiculous money even to talk so it's kind of um but i think there will be news soon because there's a there's a there's a couple of other i can't say anything but a couple of other big names are, are now getting <laughs> now now kind of want to beat me up for some reason <laughs> I, don't to, I don't know what i did wrong but, uh, <laughs> were you surprised it's good. it's good it's good because you know what i'm in the gym and i've i've been in the gym i have never 27 years since i retired and it wasn't because um, I was I was fought for the world title and I retired after a world title mm -hmm. fight that I lost on points, and I retired because of the business because I'd made no money. You know, I've been really badly treat, treated in 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 my career, um, and I was just totally dismayed at, at what boxing. You know, I said, I mean, people won't realize how bad it was, but when I won the world title live on ITV, my my message in the ring with Stanley Dole offers, I'm not coming back. And I signed off the Dole mm. when I won the world title. I was British and Commonwealth undefeated champion. I signed off the Dole. So it was, it was really dire. That's why I got out of boxing. So to all of a sudden be in the ring and doing it for me, it's like, it, it's like I'm, I'm 28 all over again. Mm. Apart from my breathing, which... <laughs> Your recovery. <laughs> so, so I need, so I need, if, if, if the police heard me, they'd arrest me if they hear my breathing. <laughs> are, you surprised the at, <laughs> are you surprised then at the kind of, I suppose, the, the conversation that is surrounding the, the quote unquote comeback of, of, of legendary fighters? You know, it's kind of split down the middle. There's a lot of conversation about, yeah, it's fantastic. A lot of younger people getting to see people like yourself, like Tyson, like Roy Jones Jr., Evander Holyfield get to fight again, something that they might not have experienced the first time around. And then there's other people who have the, the, the opinion that, you know, there's a lot of younger fighters that need opportunities, especially with everything that's happening this year. Let them have the, the, the money but, or, or the stage. Lydia, do you know, I'm, we're, not, we're not stopping them from having any exposure. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It, because, you know, the, the, you know, the, the veterans, the, the veteran greats want to play golf. Nobody's, you know, nobody's <laughs> saying to, to Rory, um, you know, they're pushing Rory out of the way. You know, Rory, they get, you know, the, the young, that's their, that's their thing and they get on with it. You know, but there's a, it's a different age we live in now. Yes. You know, there's, there's, there, we're in an age where computer guys and bloggers can, can make millions calling out fighters, you know, so, so this is a whole different entertainment. Um, do you know, I mean, a lot of world champions might have a couple of hundred thousand followers. You've got guys that sit around the computer thinking of ideas and doing stuff, influence and whatever. Millions and millions of followers making fantastic money. You know, you've got great actors treading the boards for, for hundreds of pounds. And then you've got guys... In only way is Essex and Geordie Shore driving around in Bentleys. So the world is the world is the world is changing. So you've got to you've got to change with it. You've got to adapt 
you've got to adapt with that. And the sport of boxing needs to adapt as well. There is definitely, you know, there's definitely an interest. I mean, I think Roy Jones, Mike Tyson was one of, was one of the highest, one of the highest pay-per-views of the year. You know, yeah, with, with I think it was 1.2 million, I think it was. <laughs> I mean, so obviously there's an attraction, you know, I'm, and I'm sure people will want to see at 56, if I can even stand up for eight rounds, <laughs> that my fight. So it's also, it's good. Do you know, I've, I've suffered a lot over the years, you know, since my brother died and various things in my childhood with, with, with um, depression. And, um, you know, at a time when, you know, it wasn't, you didn't say you were struggling. You didn't say you were suffering. It was like, you know, get a grip, you know, there's people going down the mines, there's people, you know, working really tough jobs. So what, you couldn't do that, you know, and I've struggled really, really badly. So if I can, if I can help people a little bit uh, to overcome that, because the last couple of weeks have been great for me. You know, I, mm -hmm. I just went from the darkest hole to, to, to flying again. So if I can help other people, you know, as they get older to, to realize their potential and realize that, you know, life's not over. Three months ago, I felt like my life was over. I felt like there's no, the future's, there is no future. You know, there's no jobs, there's no work. You know, is this what's going to be? And then all of a sudden, you know, now there's a, the, people are talking about me in the same, in the same breath as Evander Holyfield and, and Roy Jones and Mike Tyson. And, and you know, that's, that's wonderful. I never, I never fulfilled my potential. Mm. in boxing you know because I, I wasn't looked after and i didn't i didn't have a good career i won the world title but i won the world title without a professional trainer i won the world title without without a proper gym you know kind of me and my brother and my assistant amateur coach you know and that, and that was it you know no 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 nutritionists no strength and conditioners no heating and not even a toilet in the gym so you know i want to inspire people and you know if we if they can if they can wake up with for a brighter day and go and do something you know the world the world shouldn't just because you get to a certain age and say oh no just let 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 the youngsters live no, absolutely like, oh, you know we still got some living to do absolutely i agree and uh, for me i'm delighted i'm delighted that i get to experience you know to even get to get this opportunity to speak to you you know and, and knowing about your career and i know you mentioned that you know you didn't fulfill your potential, and that's always something that I wanted to to talk to you about or to ask you about is that that idea of not having anyone or not having the right people will say around your career that is very much still a very prominent problem within the business of boxing now, and I wanted to know your opinion of that you know how do we change that? Is it down to the fighter is it do we need to give, give them more knowledge? Is there need, does there need to be more communication between fighters like yourself who've no, been there? You know it's, it's, it's very difficult because the world, the world is still a place of it's not what you know, it's who you know. And mm -hmm. it's been in the right place at the right time. And, you know, that's, that still exists. And, you know, you know the, the, the fighters that are connected can get numerous opportunities. You know, you just see the Derek Chisoras of this world. Now, back in my day, you lose, you know, you lose a a few fights and you go to the bottom of the pile and you've got to work your way up right to the start again. And your know, fighters, you know, and good luck to Derek. You know, he's, you know, he's done really, really well. But your know, guys, guys like that, you know, because they are connected and because they're in a, in a certain promotion or whatever, can get tiny opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Um, and, and that, you know, what do you, what, you know, how do you change that? You know, how do you change that? You know, the, the big promoters, you can't have so many TV outlets, although it's getting so much better. Back in, back in the old days, um, you know, you had BBC and then ITV come on board doing fights as well. But that, that was it. So you were either with two promoters or you didn't, you know, or you didn't get TV. And, and it hasn't changed that much. There is certain more, you know, there is more opportunities because there's more TV stations. So you do get, you do get, a few more promoters getting the opportunity, but I'd like to see TV companies work with, with more promoters, you know, rather than, you know, putting all the eggs in one basket. So mm -hmm. there's only one groups, you know, group of fighters get, 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 um, get shown on TV. They should make it, you know, the TV companies have that power. Absolutely. I agree with you. 
Um, so the, the Christmas tree. Oh, do you know what? I, I had noticed it at the start. So I was like, I must comment on that Christmas tree. I ran out of lights. <laughs> I hope you put it up yourself, did you? Oh, I did have some help off my children. <laughs> my, my two little ones. My little, little Donny Gold pair. Uh, um, yeah, they, they did it. I couldn't reach the top, so I got no lights at the top. <laughs> We'll have to get you. We we'll have to get you something to put your star at the top. Yeah, now, can I just say, just in case, what's that? Ethan and Aiden. That's my Ethan and Aiden McCroy. That's, can you see them in the background? My I'm little, fine Irish um, names. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mother, their mum's. Um, well, obviously, my connections are Irish as well, but their mum's Donegal. Well, this is a good link because when I put up um, the poster that you were coming on tonight, I got a message off a friend of mine called John Hutchinson. Who uh, I know, my, yeah. John, I was training John. Up in <laughs> John's a great guy. So he was say, he was say, he he sent me actually um, a newspaper clipping of the two of you guys. Yeah. And in the ring, so it was uh, a good good connection. I didn't know that you had a connection to Johnny Gall. Yes, very much so. Yeah, very much so. But um, yeah, look, great, absolutely superb part of the the world. It's um, yeah, no, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Do you as get to visit? Mother, as is the mother country all together. Absolutely. <laughs> My family hailed from Tyrone, the McCroys. Oh, really? Yeah. Very good. A, Very good. Big, and a lot of McCroys doing them, um, doing okay, aren't they? Padraig and you know the names, the yeah. names coming them, um, coming about more and more. Well, would you be, would you be related to uh, Paddy think, McCroy? Yes, I think, I think. Um, I think there's um, a lot. My family came over. Um, my granddad and them came over to work in the steel company, as 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 so many Irish did. Um, way back um, and and the place concert uh, where my my the McCrory's hail from is a massive Irish every, every everybody is is good everybody's from an Irish family my school when I went to school St. Patrick's school it was you know the Callaghan's the Wards you know the McGurk's the every everybody everybody was every single kid <laughs> every single kid had an Irish name <laughs> And Irish, right. and Irish grandparents, yeah, yeah. Massive, massive Irish contingency there. <laughs> Good stuff. Listen, what I wanted to ask you as well, while we're talking about legends, I had watched um, a really old um, news clip of you recently. And well, why, why did you have to say a really, really old news clip, Lydia? It was black and white, Glenn. What? I think it was the first... <laughs> Was it moving pictures? Or was it, just, it, it was know. barely moving. It was barely moving. <laughs> but I think it was actually ahead of your uh, your pro debut. Like you were really young. You were like 19 or 20 in it. Yeah, 19. 19. And uh, it was talking about um, uh, Muhammad Ali and how mm. you had met him. I had, yeah. My, about my seventh fight. My seventh fight at the Grown Hotel. It was just a normal fight. I was an undefeated young heavyweight. And I wasn't really a heavyweight. My manager put me in as a heavyweight and I won my first fight in 90 seconds so I stayed a heavyweight but I was never a heavyweight I was light heavy and um, I, got, I, I, I was winning I was winning fights and we boxed at the Grosvenor and then when I got there I was told that the guest of honour was Muhammad Ali and he, Muhammad you know Muhammad Ali is my hero you know I just grew up I grew up I loved characters in sport so being from a football area in Newcastle um, my my first year was George Best, you know I, I love the, the greatest, the greatest of, course. of, of all most, time, the greatest of them all. So I know he was, he was a character as well, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch. You know he was um, just just we all just everybody wore their socks by their ankles. You know we just everybody in school loved George Best, and then <laughs> and then a bigger a bigger character came into into my life, you know, and that was them. Um, my dad must have had the TV a repeat of um, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman. And that was me totally captivated. You know, he called the round. He was supposed to be destroyed by George Foreman and, and he beat him. And then I bought my first ever book. I bought a book um, of Muhammad Ali and it was, it was mostly pictures. And I cut the pictures out. I cut the pictures and stuck them all over my wall. And that was me. Absolutely hooked. So when I got the, so then I found myself 19, I'm boxing in front of my hero. And, and bearing in mind how much, uh, you know, how, how, how backward, you know, we were in the boxing world. My first pro, the first fight, the first pro fight I ever saw live, I was in it. 
the first fight I Ins ever saw live. That is insane. I, it was me fighting. So um, so that's how experienced I was. Anyhow, seven fights later, I'm, I'm fighting in front of Muhammad Ali. So I had to. I could not resist doing the Ali shuffle, <laughs> dropping my hands and, and winding my arm up and all that. And, and, and I, to be honest, I was quite embarrassed at the end. I thought, what? And I won the fight, but I didn't box very well. And I thought, what a nugget. What a <laughs> in front of my hero. And Jarvis is there popped his head around the dressing room door and said that McCrory, fasten your boots. Muhammad Ali wants to meet you. And now could you imagine Muhammad Ali, the most famous person I can't, I can't, ever, I can't wants imagine to, meet it, me. to be honest. Uh, and, and, and I was a little I was a little worried going to meet him because I thought like, what's he gonna say? So and, and you know you said I'd heard I loved him, but I'd also heard controversial things about, you know, um, his relationship with Malcolm X and, 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 and you know, not going to Vietnam and stuff. You know, and, and, uh, he, yeah. you know, I didn't quite know. I didn't quite know. I think one of the one of the scariest things is meeting your hero because they might not be what you thought they were. Absolutely. Uh, and he was he was ten times he was ten times what I thought he'd be. He, he was like, I, I need a picture. Man, you so good looking. <laughs> you prettier than me. You know, uh, you know, he was just, he was just, just divine. He was just wonderful. He got pictures. I've got a wonderful picture of him. He's, he's given his chin up. He's, he's fist in my chin. He's, he's got the alley face on. And it was just, it was, it was superb. And and a few years later, I was out to with Tyson, and he remembered me, and he came over, and unfortunately, it was only three years difference. He looked magnificent in nineteen. 84. By 1987, when I was out sparring with Tyson, Parkinson, the offset of Parkinson's mm -hmm. had crept in, and it was really quite shocking um, how the illness had affected him. But he came over and you know pulled the face again, and uh, it, it was it was a, a wonderful, wonderful man. And I, you know, I never I never thought at that time that I would then years later come and you know do the full commentary, the full of his funeral. Wow. You know, so I was in, uh, you know, for a young kid from um, a little village, Stanley, in, in, in the northeast of England, to have that connection with 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 the greatest was something that you know changed my life and probably changed a lot of other lives because he he interacted with with everybody. He was so great, and it's so important. It's you know, I, I find it's always important to take time, you know, with the kids, take time to pat them on the back and you know, rub the hair and tell them, you know, give them a little bit of support because I remember what that meant to me. Mm. You know, just getting that, you, you know, sometimes I think, well, you know, it makes, if I don't say anything, who cares? You know, nobody cares about me. But, um, but you know, you, you then realise that it does, you know, kids really, you know, it affects them, you know, it makes them try harder. So it's, um, it's very, very important. And I'm glad he did. He was, he was the greatest. Do you think that that meeting him and and getting to see firsthand to experience Muhammad Ali like that that it it it, it kind of shaped you in some way that that you wanted to be like him or because we oh. hear it now where so many fighters you know, aspire to be like him in and out of the ring, you know? Well, I think I don't you know you could never you couldn't even you know I couldn't I wouldn't even want to try and stand in his shadow. He was such yeah. a such a fantastic human being. Um, what was the question? <laughs> did, 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 his, did meeting him, that experience, did it impact you and your yes. own oh, career massively. as a fighter? Yeah, massive, massively, Lydia. Um, I, yeah, it was just, you know, he was just so, he was just so, he was so great. It was a massive influence on me. I mean, you know, just trying to look at what he did and how he boxed and how he behaved and, you know, how he was, how he stood up you know, f mm. for for people, you know, not just not just you know um, one color or anything like you know for everybody. You know, he stood he stood he stood up for everybody. He was um and you know he's he's so many uh, he's from any walk of life from from any nationality from any place in the world. How many people count Muhammad Ali as a hero? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, they, it, it's time to show a bit more of Muhammad Ali on TV these days because there's a generation that will have no idea who he is. And that'll be the first time 
ever, you know, to be, I, you know, I'm, I know Mike, I know my Aiden, he's, he's six, and he knows exactly who Muhammad Ali is. Well, so that's, that's the way he should be. Yeah, very but, much. But then, how, how did it kind of, when it turns... Well, I, I tell you how he impacted the most on my career was I went through, <laughs> you know, as I said, I wasn't handled very well. And I was put, mm -hmm. my, my, I didn't have a trainer um, at all in the early days. My, my, my then manager decided he trained me um, and he was an electrician. So, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't the best, but, um, to say, <laughs> so he got more money. He, he, he trained me as well. So, um, I went through a period when my career was just, you know, all he did was try and put me on the scares and say, hi, how you? That was my training. and then he put me in sparring and it, it, but at the time I was 20 years of age, I'd sparred with so many world heavyweight champions. It's unbelievable. You know, I was sparred with James Bone Crusher Smiths when he came to fight Bruno, you Jerry Kutz Sears, Tony Tubbs. Uh, you know, I mean, just there was just so many, so many fighters that I, and it was really, really hard. And, and my career, I wasn't big enough to be a heavyweight. And then I started mm. losing fights, and I lost five out of six fights. And I was uh, in the final one. I didn't even. I didn't even. I'd come back to the northeast. I didn't have a gym. I didn't train for the fight at all. I got about five days' notice to fight the former British champion, um, Uri Curry, in in Manchester. I got knocked out, and it was my my career was in. It was finished. I was and I was I was twenty, and my career was over. Wow. Twenty years of age. You know that's how badly managed I was, and I just remember. You know, my dad was telling me to quit. And every, well, everybody was telling me to quit. It was, it was hopeless. And I got ill. I got ill with a stomach bug. And I, I just kept um, throwing up. And at the end of like about three days, I got on the scales. And I was about 14. And I was like, the realization, the realization was, you know, about my weight. But more than anything, I kept saying to my dad and saying to him, listen, when they would say, you know, called the day Glenn and it would be like no Muhammad Ali said I would be champion of the world and I honestly 100% believed that if Muhammad Ali had said I'd be the champion of the world he wasn't wrong yeah you know, he, he couldn't be wrong you know, he was always right so if he if he thought that of me I had to I had to keep going and and that's why you know when I lost the weight the cruiserweight division had come in and it was just this is what's wrong so, you know, we set off with an old uh, room above a fruit shop. And um, I never lost, you know, I won the British, the Commonwealth and the world title out of a little room with no toilet above a, above a fruit shop. Can you so, remember? Um, he was right. He, he was, was right. He was right. He, saw he it was right. <laughs> Absolutely. But can you remember, Glenn, when you won the world title? At what point did you... After Why would fight? I not be able to remember that, Lydia? No, but what, no, what I mean... What is... 1932, it was. <laughs> well, it was 1989. Of course, I remember. Oh, were you born? I oh, absolutely. I I actually was born the year you made your debut. 84, right? Never in the world. Were you really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Boys, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember you fighting though. That's the only thing. No. <laughs> Boys, not many people can. <laughs> can you remember? Those that are still alive. <laughs> I know you can remember winning the world title, but can you remember the feeling of winning? And at what moments after you won it did you sit back and did it kind of come in and hit you that you were a world champion? Well, I was a massive outsider for for the world title fight because I, I got a I got my shot. I was I was high in the rankings because I was an undefe undefeated cruiserweight, yeah. um, and I got my I got my opportunity. Evander Holyfield moved up you know, as he does when my name's mentioned. <laughs> disappears so <laughs> not for long Glenn not for long <laughs> so Amanda Holyfield moved moved up obviously you know the bigger fish to fry you know he was um, yeah. I mean he was undisputed champion and you know there was obviously bigger names um a lot bigger names than mine so um so he moved up um, and they put me with there was one the, the, when you looked at all of the people that you you did I didn't want to fight was was one guy who's he, he put he, be trained in London for a little while. He's he was he was he was very very. He's one of those that are a bit too good for their own good, so he couldn't get fights. Um, was boxed you know boxed at heavyweight and all. His name was Patrick Lumumba, um, and Colin Hart had just been out watching him spar Mike Tyson, 
in in 1989. Um, so still, you know, a fairly good. And he'd he'd been he'd been doing, you know, too good against Mike. And yeah. Colin Hart came back, and I, I picked the paper up. So I, I had my first ever training camp, which was some porter cabins in a in a field next to a hotel, which was was fantastic. I never had a training camp in my life. Um, so I felt like a real pro for the first time ever. Trained really, really, trained really hard. Brought um, um, Alfonso Ratliff over, who'd, who'd fought Lamp, who'd fought um, Lumumba. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he fought Lumumba. So I brought him over. You know, big six foot six cruiserweight. So we cut no corners for this one for the first time ever. And um, and then on the morning of the fight, I, I picked the sun up um, to read. And it was, um, I knew I was a big outsider, but it, the, the headlines were, Glenn's a goner. And it just gave me absolutely no chance. Of it. And that was the realization. The realization was that he was Don King's fighter, who was a mm -hmm. Kenyan, who boxed in Sweden, you know, was a very decorated amateur in Sweden, and then went to Las Vegas. So he was king of the Who Wants Him club, you know. Mm. He didn't, you know, didn't draw flies, couldn't get any crowds. So he, so Don King had, Send them to to Stanley to um, to pick up the title, in, you know, and take it back. The only thing was they they didn't realize that you know it wasn't just me at the contend with. It was a few thousand crazed Geordies. Who, um, <laughs> who absolutely, the, the the atmosphere was unbelievable, um, and it was a big. It was obviously a big shock to see Glenn's a goner, but I got there. And, you know, everybody was feeling a bit down and a bit, you know, the first world title fight ever. In fact, I'll tell you how, how, how much out of the zone, you know, how much I, I didn't realize what was going on was um, I went to see my, my, my eldest daughter, um, Tori, Victoria, and um, just to give her a kiss, she was just a toddler and um, at the bottom of the street. And then I walked up the street, which Stanley Front Street is 300 yards from my house to the venue. Wow. And I walked up the street with my bag, just by myself, just had my bag on my back, and I'm walking up, and I kept seeing people with dicky bow ties. And women were like, fancy clothes on and posh frocks. And, and I walked, and I remember there was a moment where I, I said, what the hell's going on in Stanley? And, I, <laughs> and it was my world title fight. I got, I got up the street, and all the cameras were there, and people were... People were, crowds of people were there and they saw me and everybody started cheering. And I, re that, I realized they were there for me. It was, it, was, um, it was uncanny. And then in the dressing room, everybody was a bit, a bit mellow to say the least. Um, and then we went out, we went out to the, the crowd and that, the roof got blown off with honestly unbelievable, unbe anybody that was there will tell you, any of the commentators, Ian Dog, John Rawling, any of the guys that were there will say it's one of the greatest nights, one of the best atmospheres ever. And this is a, the first world title fight in the northeast of England, wow. in, my home t in my home little village of Stanley. And it was unbelievable. And as we walked into the ring, the roof went, and I remember thinking, do you know what? Nobody's told them I'm not gonna win. And yes. I got in the ring and I was starting to feel, you know, you, you, you start to feel, you know, the nerves have gone then and you start, you know, you're going, you're going to war, you know, you got, you, it's battle now. And, um, and I looked across the ring and all, all through the dressing room, in the dressing room, Bo Williford, who was managing me from America and then my, my, my coach, Alan Walker, who was great. They just kept saying, box him, he's dangerous. He can really, really punch, box him, the mumbas, box him, box him, box him. So I was... So that was in my plan, you know, so I got introduced and then they introduced Pat Lumumba from Kenya, Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. And he walked out, he walked out. You see this on the video, if, if, you, <laughs> if, if you know what videos are, Lydia. And, and he walks out and he, go, and he holds his hands out to each side and he goes like this to the crowd, like as if. <laughs> and I remember at that moment, I just thought, I'm gonna knock your head off. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> smash your face in. And it was just, it was something, the fight that came, you know, that he just insulted, it was just like, whoa, not in my village, you know, not in my town. 
<laughs> and I went out and nearly knocked him out, hit him with a big left. I went straight for him, hit him with a big left hook in the first round, almost knocked him out. And um, and that kind of, I mean, he, he came back and he had a, a good middle of the fight. And then um, I'm ringside and it was getting really hard around about round seven, round eight. And my, my, my little brother who, who had um, Friedrich's attacks here, my, my younger brother, wasn't supposed to be at the venue because, you know, my mom was nervous about going and so he couldn't go. Everybody else, the rest of McCrory's half filled the, the arena, but my brother, and then I looked down in the eighth round and my little brother, David, was ringside and he's going <laughs> in, his, in, his, in his wheelchair. And um, that was it. It was like, whoa, that was all I needed to get me over, to get me over the finishing line. It was, it wow. was an amazing night, an amazing story. What, what a story is right. Like that's, like that's to have that to have that memory to have that legacy is like and you're you know as many professional fighters as they are who win titles along the way you're in a very select few who make it to to win a world title you know so it is very special yeah it was um it was an amazing night but do you know that the sadness of it that night was just unreal it was just mm. you know i was 24 years of age and you know i'd come through so much and I'd done it. And now yeah. from, from I was, the minute I was at school and I first told my career teacher that I was going to be heavyweight, I was going to be champion of the world. And he told me, get out. <laughs> everybody had said, every time I'd said that, every time I said that to anybody, everybody had the same, everybody said the same thing. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Mm. You know, the Northeast wouldn't, never had a world champion ever, you know, no, don't be stupid. And then, um, and for them that to have done that, to have actually done that was, was just the greatest night of my life. But the next morning was the worst morning I'd ever encountered. Why? The next morning, because I'd done it. I didn't have any more dreams. Yeah, yeah. I'd done it. And I'd never, I never set out in my career to, you know, to, to be a multi-title holder or multi-weight or, or anything like I never turned up, you know, I didn't 20 defenses or one def I never ever thought of a defense. I never ever thought of anything but winning the world title. There was no, there was no plans for anything after that. So if I could have, if I could have, um, if I could have retired then I would have, but, um, you know, I got, I got seven and a half grand and two managers took 25% each. So, so I come off the door, but only just, and, you know, and, and the realization was that I, I had to, I had to, I had, you know, I had to, I had to fight on. But the inspiration and the aspir, you know, anything further, you know, we had done it. Me and me and my little brother had kind of realized our dream, and then it was just getting back. To, it was back to reality, and and you know, he's not going to get any better, and mm. and he's going to struggle. He's going to struggle on. Um, and kind of, what am I going to do now? So what am I going to do now? So it was, um, it, it wasn't, it was, um, it was very bittersweet. Mm. Then the rest of the career was crap after that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Well, Pretty I much, remember. You know, it was, it was, yeah. I remember, you know, when the, the Lennox Lewis fight, obviously, that's, that, that was a big deal. Oh, you would remember points. that one, wouldn't you, Lydia? <laughs> yeah? It's amazing how many people remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. But yeah, look, you never look. Heard them. I've heard them all, haven't I? But I man, mean, you great. you know, the one, you know. The one thing I've got. Somebody once said, that, "You know, your video is fantastic of, of learning." So I say, "How? How? how? You know, what he, he says, "Well, put it on. You can tame a great egg by it." But look, but the the, the Lennox, you know, Lennox, I didn't want to fight Lennox. I was working in a, I was working in a bar. Well, well, that's I what I was going to say. I, 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 I remembered I it because because of you, you talking in previous interviews about how you just took the fight for for financial reasons. I took it because because my manager, when I lost the world title, which my fight was brought forward, you know, the whole thing was was a mess. They knew I couldn't make the weight, and Bo Wilford, you know, said that you know you'll get there when I get there in the last. Eight days you make. I was like, I can't make the weight. You pulled the fight forward. I can't make the weight. So, um, you know, they took my title from me. That's why I, I was very, very. That's why I hated 
the business. Yeah. And um, and then he took my money away as well. I never saw that either. That went on the plane with him. So um, then I got a tax bill. I got a tax bill um, a while later for eighty thousand, eighty thousand pound or something. And it was like, yeah. I've never earned. I've never earned half of that my whole career. And you know, I, I had no advice on off anybody on nobody that knew anything. Um, my parents are just you know working class, you know lovely people, and um, so we had. So I, I, the only thing I knew was how to fight you know, to get money. So I should have went bankrupt, but I didn't. I, I didn't know any. You know, so the only thing I thought, I got to call. I've got to stop calling people out, haven't I? It doesn't. It's not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've got. To, I've got. To, I've got. To, the only place I'll get that sort of money is one. There's only one guy out there. And that's that was Lennox Lewis. So um, you know, I, I still I was embarrassed about. Uh, if I'm honest, I, you know, I felt bad about that because my my heart had always been in my fighting all the time. And then Lennox was a di Lennox was for a different. Unfortunately, it was for a different reason. It was for finances, and you know, mm -hmm. my pride made me train and work hard. But the love of the game was not there, you know. And excuse me, that hunger, that vigor, that motivation that determination wasn't there it was kind of i've just been i've just been ripped to shreds had a horrible career and now i'm going for the, you know they're going to feed me for the slaughter mm. it was um and, and you know i had to come back after that fight and, and i come back and go back into in the world class um and, and for had the first world title fight in the soviet union against al cole you know which which would have went a lot better, you know, had we, we clashed heads in the middle of the fight and, um, and the referee didn't stop it. And, you know, it was a blatant, it was a blatant head clash, you know, but he just carried on. So I had to take, you know, Cole wasn't the greatest puncher or anything, but I had to go down on my knee to get out of the way of punches twice. So you got a 10 7 round and then he goes on the back foot. So, you know, but again, my heart, you know, I was going through with it. But I, if I'm honest, if I'm bluntly honest, honest you're probably the first person I've ever said. I didn't want to win. Mm. I didn't want to win because I didn't want to be back in that jungle. I didn't want to be back amongst, you know, just being sold and, you know, it was, um, and I, you know, I hope the game's not as bad these days, but um, I, 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 you know, I fear a lot of fighters have to struggle a lot more and you know you hear about the the big paydays you hear about the, the the big names but for the you know for the lesser known guys who to do equally as well you know i i you know one bona fide world champion i was bona fide contender for evander holyfield but you know i wasn't i wasn't getting any i wasn't getting any of the perks or any of the that the other you know that lesser guys than me were getting mm -hmm. because they were connected with the right people with what you know now, Glenn, if you could go back and do it all again, would you still do it? Yeah, of course I would. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that was mine and to a great extent my brother's dream and, you know, his reason for his reason to stay alive. Um, and nothing can, nothing can, nothing can beat that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Before yeah. before I let you go, this there's I could talk to you for six hours. I, I could listen to more stories, but before well, you know before what? I let you go. If 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 the if the lockdown come round or something, Jesus, I could speak to anybody <laughs> for six hours. <laughs> we'll do a weekly. Joy, we'll do a weekly. For, for three days since the last time I talked to anybody. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Help me. This is uh you know, I, I mean, joking aside, it is it is bad, isn't it? I mean, yeah, what, this yeah. year has been horrendous. It has, it has. Oh. And I, I, I've just thrown myself into doing these, into doing loads of, like, Instagram lives. Yeah. Because yeah, otherwise, but, um, there's no work. I know. And, and you know, they're talking, they're talking about, maybe it's going to, I mean, oh, please God, they don't. The, the little bit of time over Christmas where they're going to relax. Yeah, relax things. They're talking about maybe he's pulling that back, and yeah, you know, I just, I just, the effect it's having on people. I know uh, it's it's uh, absolutely terrible, and it's it's uh, not it's it's all it's it's all um, generations of people. Mm. You know, it's it's affecting everyone in in different ways. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I can get in the gym. I can I can go in the gym because the, the the little amateur gym in the same where where in the same village where I, where I started off. I'm I'm in the the amateur gym, um, which I started twenty five years ago or something. So I'm training there, just me and my son. But all the kids, all the kids that would normally be there can't be there. Yeah. So they can't be there, and I'm thinking, you know, boxing was my. That's all I had, you know. We were family, you know, big family, you know, seven kids, and we had no money, and you know, three in the bed when I was eighteen, and and life was tough. But you know what I had? I had, you know, there was lots to do, and I had boxing, you know, and that was, mm -hmm. and I just, I, I think, if 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 this had happened then, you know what? You know, I don't think I'd be talking to you now if I'm honest. I know. I know, and it's it's terrifying to think of the after effects of all of this. Even if it ends today, what this year has done, the toll it's taken on so many people. That's why, mm. and and sport is important anyway. You know, sport, and, sport is is it, sport is is. Joe, you know, what is it? What does almost every fella do on a on a on a Saturday afternoon? Mm -hmm. You know, after they've worked all week, they go to the football match. You know, they go to the rugby or they go and have a game of golf. Sport is 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 absolutely so important and you're thinking them kids that's got nothing else apart mm -hmm. from an amateur boxing gym what are they doing now like what street corner are they hanging out on you know what what trouble are they getting into yeah you know because that that it's salvation it is a lifeline to so many kids that are that are deprived you know boxing is is, is a great sport because it, it teaches them respect it teaches them discipline you know, it teaches you know it gives them a sense of pride Mm -hmm. And you know, and you, I just wonder the after effects, as you say. What you know, I think they're gonna. I think it's gonna be devastating. We need, you know, we need to look on the bright side. We need to get McCrory and whoever in the ring to cheer you up, to give you something, give you something to put a smile on your face. And then we need to get Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury to fight next year in Wembley Stadium. No, no going, no going. We're no not going selling, to Dubai. No selling your fans out at this stage, and I'd say that to both guys and the promoters. No selling your fans out for the biggest paydays. Your fans have made you wealthy men. They've made you rich beyond your wildest dreams. Now, please get that fight in the UK and just pay back time for all your fans to put a smile on all of the British fans and to make it just a great sporting event. Here, 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 here. Well, this is a good tie-in because the, the, the people that are watching, they've put in some questions into the question box. And right. one person, uh, it's from uh, Donald Smith, and he's asked, Tyson versus Fury, or Tyson versus AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson versus Fury. That's another day. You need to day. get out more. <laughs> That's another day. <laughs> um, Tyson, Fury versus AJ. Will it happen? And if it does, what are your predictions? Do you know what? I, I, actually, I, I, Glenn, do you I know what? I remember, I remember watching an interview with you. Uh, it was with Radio Raheem, and I remember you saying you need to watch out for this guy called Anthony Joshua. He's coming to America. He's going to be a big star. So you are right. <laughs> no, do you know? Do you know? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm big fans of both of them. Um, I mean, Fury. I'm, 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 I'm very friendly with Tyson. Um, yeah, he's a but, big, you know, big, I've been, big fan. I've been, I've been you know, I've, I've had some great times. I've had some great times, and he's, he's a, he's a. Smashing guy, Andy Joshua, really, really nice guy, and I admire them both. It was great to see him fight the other night, and great to see him back, back shining. You're know, really, really looking good because you know I wouldn't have wanted him to look subpar because that would have yeah. that would have just took away from the fight. The fact he looked really, really good. By the time this fight happens next summer, Tyson Fury might have been out of the ring for a year and a half at a time when you know you need to be busy. And I know Tyson is is a great trainer. But um, it's a great matchup. It's a great matchup. It's 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 wonderful. And I'm not going to give you any predictions or anything now because you can't. You know, you can't yeah. call a fight. You can't call a fight six months out. You know, I know if they fought now, Tyson Fury would win. In my in my view, but you can't call a fight six months out. And you know, you can even you know the day of the fight because things can change at a weigh-in. 
and I've seen her so many times, things can change on the way from the dressing room to the ring. And, you know, if, if Frank Bruno talked a great fight against Mike Tyson. And, you know, Mike Tyson was starting to slip then. You know, there was, there was things going on behind the scenes and his life was starting to go out. But, you know, when, when, when Frank crossed himself 32 times on that walk to the ring, you knew, you knew that, you know, it's down to you now. You know, mm. God's an interesting spectator, but it's, 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 about, it's, a, it, it's about what work you guys have put in, you know. <laughs> um, God's, God's, God's fair, you know. He's going to give each one of you an even break. He's not gonna, prayers are not going to help you now. Absolutely. So, so it can change. It can change so often. So, no, I, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to wait for predictions until the fight gets made and we see them train. And, you know, I, 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 got, I got called for, for saying before the Joshua Ruiz fight when he went to train in, in uh, Miami, and I said, this is absolutely wrong. This is, this is just so bad. I can see this all going wrong. And everybody said, are you just jealous? You know, I said, yeah, of course I'm jealous. I'd love to be in Miami. It's great city. <laughs> but um, not, if I was training, not if I was training to defend the heavyweight championship of the world. So, you know, it's all about, it's, it's great. You know, I mean, let's hope it gets signed and we can, we can have many, many more of these conversations, Lydia. Absolutely. Another question in from Susan Murphy has asked, um, were you surprised at how well you done at boxing commentary after you retired? Um, do you know, the fact that I love, I love this, I love the, the history of boxing. You know, I was, I, the first book I read was, was, um, I mean, I got an Ali book for, for the pictures, but the first book I actually read was it, uh, the club secretary's house before we went off to, to, to have a fight when I was about 12 years old. It was Harry Graham, uh, given to the Angels by James J. Fair. And um, so I, I kind of love the history of boxing, you know, and I love the old yeah. fighters and the great fights and all that. So I had a passion. And then it, I got interviewed by Ian Dark um, before my world title fight. And, and he picked up on on my love of, of the game of boxing and, mm -hmm. you know, the fighters and the, the history and uh, all of that. And he, he put me forward as a commentator. And that, that was a blessing because he's great. You know, yeah. Ian is the best. You know, he's just the best. So, so when you get, when you manage to then have 20 years with the best commentator, you know, and, and you know, he said, Glenn, you're going to be great at this. As soon as you learn to speak English, we just got <laughs> all we got to do is work on that work on the language once you get once you get that right and that that's true though it was you know you kind of talk like this all the time you know everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna switch up like <laughs> everybody's gonna know what the hell you're talking about so, you know, so, so i had to i had to i had to just slow down and improve just just take away, you know. Don't want to change. Don't want to. Don't want to change my my northern tones too yeah. much. I'm just just become a bit Bond, a bit Bond like. Why I <laughs> why I laugh? <laughs> Kenny bag of crisps. Well, I, I did always think Sean Connery every time I heard you commentate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll take one more question before I let okay. you go. I've taken up way more, too much of your time. Do you know, do you know I did actually audition for the James Bond? No, oh, you didn't. I swear to God. I what? got called up to the Bond officer. I did. I did. I'm the guy. I, I was in the last, I, was, I swear to God, I was in the last few. I'm the man that made Pierce Brosnan famous. What? <laughs> <laughs> Once they saw me, they realized Pierce Brosnan was the man for the job. That's right. God, yeah, that's true story. Oh, brilliant. I'm going to use this clip. It's going to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very last question. And this right. is from um, Aidan uh, O'Shaughnessy. And he's asked, who, in your opinion, is the greatest fighter of all time and why? Sugar Ray Robinson. And if he doesn't know, then I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> because anybody that knows anything that's ever looked into history of boxing ever watched the tapes he is just incomparable he's yeah. just incomparable you know and he could lose i mean he could fight every three weeks 
it was just at a time when they were bred tougher and he was just silky smooth but was devastating and a great finish and he could do everything he could just do everything his record his record just stands for itself forget about th these fighters with with them undefeated records and they're undefeated because they they're well managed and they pick their opponents at the right time sugar ray robinson took the ball on and you remember he took them on in a time when it was a lot tougher then. You know, they, they didn't have tough promoters. They had a thing called the Mafia who ran yeah. off. Do you know? So it was, um, you know, to get records like he got and to do the things he did and to win the titles he won and to be as good looking as he was yeah. and to dance like he did, that's class. Perfect. Couldn't have asked for a better answer there. You sold him. For anyone that doesn't know, all the young'uns watching, you've sold him perfectly. <laughs> yeah, there's one video, there's a video, a great video, um, I, I, I don't know, DVD or what, there's, there's a great, I saw it years and years ago, and it's um, Sugar Ray Robinson, pound for pound, and it's just a great bit of, a great, it's, 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 um, it's my pride of my collection, my DVDs, that is, that is the creme de la creme of pound for pound, Sugar Ray Robinson. Amazing. Well, Glenn, thank you so much for your time, I really thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, my darling. That was so Love great. You, you. Yeah, you too. Or I, I mean it, a genuine honor. Thank you so Thank you. much. Really God appreciate us. Hopefully, see you again soon once all yeah. this is open. I hope so. Hope so. And have a lovely and merry Christmas. Yeah, and you too. Enjoy, enjoy. God bless. See you later. Thanks, Glenn. I don't know how to get off this. Oh, so. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so get rid of me. I'll close get it down. I'll close it down. <laughs>